Now that we are all caught up, we're rested. I have this amazing gum and some water, which makes it even more amazing because it's it's like a, a nice like minty like woo. <laughs> Dark Wolf undoes King's arson. <laughs> Oh, okay, both of those are Basil J. Franklin. Got it. Very good stuff. We are going to make this Beast Man city of sorts. Yeah, I am the permit. What was I doing again? <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Very good. Um, and we are going to go back and do a city how we did before. Um, not just explore a region, because Mesotopia spoiled us a little bit, right? We already had a broad region made, and we would just focus on every region and make it into uh, into separate sub, like, duchies or uh, baronies or whatever, or counties. Now we're really going to make just one city or even a city-state. We're going to generate the numbers first, and then we can draw it out to include the information that we have. Um, it'll be a bit of a blend of two, um, of two locales here. It'll be one city, but if we look at... Okay, so here we have the imperial part of the city, and then we have the beastmen part of the city. Each of them are going to, um, each of them are going to have their own things kind of going on, and they're going to coexist with the realization that the imperial portion is the dominant portion over the beastmen. Well, this should be... Okay, very good. We're going to clear this. By the way, Basil is pronounced Basil. Ah, okay. Basil. Basil. For the Imperial races, they are primarily tieflings and humans. Though there have been indications that others live under their rule in some way. Uh, this doesn't have to be just tiefling or human as a major or minor race because this is still an outland style campaign. Uh, remember, the theme for the next four campaigns is the Shadow of Shadahar. We're not in the Empire just yet. We're looking at outskirts. And, uh, you know, if we have a secondary minor race in the Empire, it'd be dwarves since they were displaced from their ancestral homes by the current occupiers of the Shadahar Empire. Oh, it's a, it's a World of Warcraft thing? Gotcha. So I'm still fine rolling for any of the nine that exist in the player's handbook. Like, so if you want, you could even replace this and, you know, Empire would be PHB races. Beast would be Volo's races. Bazil. Ah. Bazil. Like Brazil, but without the R.
guess if we're doing it this way, it'd be... There we go. All right, there are nine. Let's roll... Let's roll a d10 and see what our major is. Six. Our minor is seven. Now we need 13-sided die because there are 13 Volos races. Three and 12. Okay. These other aspects are all going to be D20s. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to roll seven D20s and fill it in. Eight, six, eight, twelve, twenty, fourteen, and three. One more time for the Beastman part of the city. We have 19, 19, 16, 1, 18, 2, and 18. Oh, I'm sorry. The, the races are how they get along. That's why I had the colon there. That's right. These are going to be D20s, so I'm going to just roll 2D20. Uh, 19 and 13. There we go. Won't need this. Let's pop over to our DMG. We're actually in the section that we need to be, right? We have weird locales and monuments. We're going to start with monuments for each of these locations. Move down to weird locales and everything else is going to be on one page. And then we can craft our city around this. Basil equals UK. King says uh, we'll name it uh, flow card. Oh, gotcha, right. Flow card, dark wolf. Have you seen the Great Mouse Detective? It's pronounced like... Uh, so that's Basil of Baker Street. It's been a long time since I've seen the Great Mouse Detective, Dark Wolf. And what do you want to name Flowcard? King. Do you want to name the city that? Hmm. All right. We are in mountains. Let's go on a little bit of a trekking adventure through the mountains. Oh, ice cavern. We're going to do this. We're in the northeast. That'll work. We'll name the beast city that so I can finally murder Dark Wolf in some form or another. <laughs> And then, so the the city will need, uh, the city will need a name itself, and where the beast uh, tribes live are, is going to be known as the Floker District. All right, monuments number fourteen is ooh. Well, we're building a wall. Fourteen. Great stone wall intact with tower fortifications spaced at one mile intervals. And number three, faces carved into a mountainside cliff. Well, I was thinking about putting in a mountain anyway. That works. For the Floker District, monument number two, 
a plundered burial mound or pyramid. And 18, an intact circle of standing stones. There's a weird locale in each part of this uh, the city. The weird locale in the Imperial City is a floating earth moat with a tower on it. This is almost like a prison. And that would be like the Panopticon. And weird locale number 18. Forest of petrified or awakened trees. Yeah, Tycho. What did King tell you, Tycho? <laughs> Repeat after him. <laughs> okay, race relations in the Imperial City, 19. Racial majority oppresses minority. And in the Beastman part of the city, it's 13. Contested leadership, open fighting. The ruler status in the Imperial City is 8. A feared tyrant. And in the Beastman City is 19, a... A religious leader. Notable traits in the imperial part are six. A river divides the town. That, whew, I don't think we could uh, ask for uh, more creative or uh, or even appropriate uh, random rolls. Notable traits number nineteen. The site of an important tomb. Or graveyard. Wow, geez. Apparently it's been plundered, though. For religious reasons by the leader. It is, uh, the Imperial City is known for its number eight. Tough warriors. Well, it is, a, it is a feared tyrant, right? And the Beastmen are known for 16. High fashion. Well, if you have all these different bodies... You have to adjust for different types of legs and claws and wings or whatever else, water. You're going to have a lot of different fashions and a lot of creativity. And the current calamity in the imperial part of the city is number 12. Flooding. Well, a river divides a town. Could you? <laughs> I mean, if you look at this, it, this it built itself, and it it works. It works so well. Current calamity number one. Ah, a suspected vampire infestation. Interesting that the vampires are not counted among the more you know these natural creatures because they're unnatural. And you know what? Do they are they getting what they deserve because they plundered a burial mound or a pyramid? That could be. My throne, so close yet so far. Mournful of woo. <laughs> yeah, rip Dark Wolf. Oh my. At least it wasn't uh, Orcus this time, Dark Wolf. Tycho uh, puts his sneaky little pixie hands on the deck of many things and compulsively draws a card. Enjoy your, uh, enjoy your devil, Tycho Boom. Dark Wolf comes back as a male dragonborn cleric. Well, if, even if you have a little nub of a tail or a full one, swish responsibly. Okay, we need to now explore what are races 3 and 12 in Volos. 1, 2, 3, Furbolg. And Miner is 12, the Tritons.
Then in the player's handbook, we have six and seven. That is going to be gnomes and half elves. And you know what? What if this? Uh, we had a ton of half elves uh, who came from the Imperial Army la in last week's campaign. What if this is where they come from? In that case, this would be half elf drow, indicating that there's maybe there are some drow around. I mean, there's humans and whatnot, but there's there's a significant uh, portion of uh, drow half elves here, and of the gnomes. Um, we'll determine which one is the majority and which one is the minority here. We'll roll a d4. A 2. So looking at gnomes, the evens are forest. There we go. And now we've connected it to last week's campaign. And last week's campaign connects to the entire rest of Mesotopia. Brilliant! We did it! Uh, Dark Wolf, roll you a color. Sure, I'm already on the page here. Um, I'll, I'll, I will use the dice roller in chat. You get a d6... So, 1d6. Uh, you are either red or gold. And then I will roll odds for chromatic, evens for metallic. Odds. You are a red dragon, Dark Wolf. You are a red dragon. King readies in action to turn on a portable fan to hide. <laughs> okay. We have our inspiration. From this, we know that we need a couple, a uh, couple different features: a river that divides the town, um, and we we must set up some kind of a wall. There's going to be some kind of on either side of this. Hmm. <laughs> man, man, man. <laughs> Is this are you are you what's his name from uh <laughs> Are you what's his name from um Xenoblade Warriors 2? The uh the, the kind of like the the guinea pig dude? Oh well, what's his name? Uh Poperon or something? Man, man, man. <laughs> Lightish red. <laughs> we're, we're getting into some red versus blue stuff right now. Okay, let's put, we'll put this right over here. Hmm. All right, so we should, we should definitely have some mountains. Maybe off to the side here. Kind of coming out. Maybe a branch comes out on, on over this way. I 
All right. Kind of breaks. And there's probably some other like monuments or if this is like granite or or whatnot's been pushed up from tectonic um, like movements. There's also probably some some crags and some other pillars that have kind of been jettisoned up or pushed out from the mountain like this. King pops like a balloon. <laughs> Now we can put some kind of a big fresh water source here. Maybe there's an underground river or something that flows. We want this to be the home to the Tritons, but we want the Tritons maybe to be captives almost inside this location. So they don't really have a sea outlet. Okay. There's also a river that divides the town. If they want to keep the Tritons contained, and they, uh, Tritons can walk on land, but it's rather uncomfortable for them. And if this is what they've known, eventually people get to the point where if you're oppressing them, they just accept it because it's easier to live with the domination than it is to try and rise up and change the circumstances. So what we can then do is say that there was a river that came out this way. Maybe this is what divides the town. And it would have flowed into another lake. Instead, that's going to be kind of uh, barren, and that's where, the, that's where the pyramid will be. Maybe the pyramid was underwater. And when they built the wall to separate the beast tribes from the um, when they to separate the beast tribes from the like imperial occupied uh, lands, uh, it dammed uh, it dammed up the river, and so the lake eventually dried out, and it was plundered, and things had happened, which apparently was containing maybe a vampiric curse of some kind. So now this is almost like a canal that's going to rise up along the river, or along the, this wall. Maybe even kind of come back at an unnatural angle. This would also allow for the Tritons to get around town in their own unique fashion. Now, none of this is coming from any kind of, uh, look, I, I don't have anything pre-planned, pre-generated. I'm going off of purely what we rolled. But think about things creatively. You know, put one and one together. I 
if this is flowing down this way. They can divide the town like so. Of course, we're going to have a big wall as a line that's going to go down this way. Probably to here. Then they're going to build a defense and use the crags as checkpoints in and out. And so there's going to be a river gate here. So I guess maybe the Tritons can come and go a bit, but this is still their home. This is where they lay their eggs or whatever they do for reproduction. Uh, you can insert your own uh, <laughs> interests here. There we go. Now let's make kind of a dusty... So, because this is developed by the Imperium, or not that by the Imperium, but by Imperials, it's going to be more square. Now what we can do is kind of juxtapose, uh, juxtaposition this against the more natural city that it was around a lake that is, that's out this way. Oh, so we can make a... We can make a lake bed. Kind of out over here... Lots of water, probably, and then probably canals and such that are all dried up, too. Torchic, all right, y'all have fun. It's time for your early morning drive. Drive safely, Torchic, and let me know, let me know what you're looking for when you get home on Discord, and I'll get back to you ASAP, okay? Oh, we get more. Pardon, we get more doubles? Yeah, I guess so. Let's see what you get. Dark Wolf charges up an empowered power word kill. <laughs> A female gnome wizard. Oh, welcome to Sylvan Club. Spicy Larry, hello! Hello, Spicy. We have a... A neutral evil female Goliath druid who is the circle of the land or uh, that's the magic the heavily magic using druid and she is a folk hero at that uh, Furbolgs are kind of like uh, fey half giants and tritons are um, tritons kind of take the place of Nereid in that they're kind of aquatic elves, but they've they've done their own thing. Yeah, an, a third evil character, Spicy Larry. I'm not fudging any dice rolls or anything. Alright, so some water is allowed to pool 
outside of the wall within governing like ear eye range here and this probably has some dusty ditches that were you they used to be rivers flowing this way too go. Some little tributaries and things like that coming off. And in the middle here we have this pyramid that was uncovered when the waters receded. I'll color that orange just to make it stand out a little bit more. And this is going to be colored this sand color to show that it is parched. I guess I should have done something like this. I don't know if green's going to be totally appropriate in all of this, because it's probably going to be uh, very developed. Green might be more appropriate over here. Outside. This is probably going to be swampy area right here. And if they made a wall, this is probably going to be controlled greens kind of around the outside of this whatever this great wall that we, we built around the city or portions of it right there however <clears throat> maybe that kind of comes out a little bit there we go Outside of this, we can put a little bit of a forest, untamed forest, living along the riverbank and kind of coming up through this marsh over on the side. There we go. And probably some elements of forest up here not too far just yet dark wolf yeah you apparently do like the void it is uh, it is nice and quiet to be fair the good guys asked us to make most things evil so they could overcome it or something that's right. If, if evil didn't exist, good good could not exist. If anything, you're the one who are making people good. Mmm, more power. <laughs> Furbolgs have tumbler noses. I'm glad to oppress these people. What do you mean a tumbler nose, King? I, I don't know if I'm getting the reference. We can have dark gray represent perhaps uh, development. 
kind of like Sin, uh, not Sin, well, I mean, maybe Sin City style, but. And then here, kind of in the park area, up along the, uh, the canals that have been built along the natural river that's flowing through the town, we can have individual, I mean, are these individual mansions, or there, are they just sort of like properties of some kind? You can, whatever, big squares, something like that. Maybe this one actually straddles the river, uh, the, ri uh, the river here. We have another one that does the same here because, of course, if one noble house does something, another one has to do it. And then, of course, someone's got to be different and is living in, like, a tower at the base of the mountain. And we have one... Uh, we'll have one over here, too. Maybe this down here is more, you know, I, I wouldn't call them row houses like it, they're poverty. I hate using the term middle class. I do not believe in that kind of a class uh, system. If it can easily describe what the concept is, we have the big rich mansions up here. They're on the water and you have the middle class ones here too, you know, parks and more open area. And then this is going to be the more densely packed um you know, this is going to be the, the poorer sections, or big commerce, or industry, or a, a mix of, of all of that. In fact, we could probably even make some kind of an artificial island out here for someone to plot something. There we go. King could probably find a use for living in the middle of a lake in a stone tower. Tumblr artist had a bad habit of making everyone's nose bright red. Oh. Well, you know, in um, a lot lately in Anime 2 King, oh, I see what you're saying. A lot lately in anime, you're also seeing uh, people who have like shiny elbows. Right? It'll have kind of like a rosy blush and then like a lustrous shine on elbows and knees and shoulders and things like that. Anime people are plastic, is that the reason? <laughs> <laughs> now we do need to indicate that there are guard towers at certain points I mean yeah, you know, we could put like a little X or something but there, there should be guard towers throughout here actually make a bit of a deeper section here or we could even do that just to showcase that you know what this might be springing up from down below under the mountain that that could be where we're getting our drow influence but there there are deep waters there are deep waters in this lake in fact that tower is going to be built right on the edge Kind of like a Lake Superior sort of thing. Maybe that one's kind of built more on a shelf. Whoops. <laughs> Didn't complete that. Huh. 
Wouldn't this be fun, right? This was done randomly. Look, this almost looks like a face in profile. Maybe that it's screaming. <laughs> this could be called like the screaming depths or something. <laughs> huh. Just like you buy them from the internet. Now, you got to watch out, King, because people have waifus and husbandos. And uh, if, if you start indicating that their waifu or husbando isn't as good as they think it is, that could cause some problems. This could be open plains and forest as well. Unless, because we haven't really used brown. Maybe, no, maybe that would be a little bit more appropriate then. So a big imperial building was built here to kind of hold the lake at bay and sever the ties. It's like a big old, it's a big dam right here. So now we come over. This was supposed to be the big connection. And it's just not making it. And so this basin dried out, as did the tributaries here. Um, or if you want, you can even do something like this. And so maybe the river got to here, but, you know, it's just, there's not enough water, so it gets really shadow, uh, shallow. And this could be, maybe this is, uh, this is mud. Water kind of comes through a little bit, and then we have we have like an alluvial fan, A L L U V I A L alluvial. But some life grows there, and if it's muddy, again we might get a little a little patch, a little bit of green here. We'll have some forest growing on the outskirts. There we go. Some of these trees are tough. So we do have an incursion of, of that there. And we can even say that maybe actually some water did even make it up here. But due to the topography of the area, it just can't get past this hump. But at least in the kind of in the dried out badlands or whatnot around here. It is causing kind of a fertile, like a fertile strip of farmland or things along those lines here. And on this island, we can have, this is where we can have our trees. Come on. 
They used to live here. Now, these, these are the petrified or the awakened trees. And aren't I the clever boy using arrows for that? <laughs> uh, let's see. Maybe they shouldn't have garbage tier taste in their spouses. <laughs> My waifu is greater than your waifu, and then you you on that note you go into a random tomb to presumably excavate a waifu. Dark Wolf, get out of there. <laughs> uh, Tycho is best waifu. Uh, never mind Dark Wolf. You stay in the void. Zombies are too scary. The void is nice. Hail Sithis. Tycho says, "I must rescue Dark Wolf." Goes into the tomb. A mummy appears. You have advantage. Oh, yeah. Nice. And I win. I rescue Dark, Dark Wolf. King says, Taiko san ugyu kawaii desu ne. Uh, Dark Wolf is rescued, per the emote. And Taiko continues to hemorrhage experience points. <laughs> In a general trend. This would probably kind of grow up along here. Life, uh, life finds a way. And why don't we have the kind of the back part of this pyramid? going out here is kind of muddy. There we go. And then we kind of, we can put a border on things too, where we get into kind of some, some dead lands if we want. Yeah, I don't know if we need to do that. I might need to use orange for something else, too. Uh, Tycho continues, continues to hemorrhage EXP and says, I give up. I'm going back to holding EXP. I can't win no matter what I do. Well, you won, uh, you won at winning Dark Wolf from the Void. How about that? Hmm, there's also an intact circle of standing stones. What that could mean is... Let's do this. And something out here, these stones, are causing their own little, kind of like a lake of sorts to be formed. Maybe something about the water is weird. It produces water. Maybe the stones kind of guide it out into some kind of... Like that. 
each ends in a little pool of some kind. Except these two at the bottom kind of come together and form a greater one. So it produces water, but maybe it doesn't, it can't, it's water, it'll quench your thirst. But maybe it doesn't support animal or plant life for some reason. You're in the dungeon now. You're in the dungeon now. I love the Old Brother soundtrack. So, plundered burial mound, forest of petrified awakened trees, and an intact circle of standing stones. A suspected vampire infestation, probably from the pyramid. It's known for high fashion. It is a site of an important tomb or graveyard. Um, and that could either be associated with the pyramid or with the, the standing stones or even the trees. Has a religious leader. Um, contested leadership, open fighting between furbogs and tritons. Over here, we have faces carved into a mountainside cliff. So we got to put some faces in here. In fact, it'll be, I think it'd be appropriate if we put faces along the screaming depths. Hmm. Giong, hello! Welcome! We are map building. We are. Uh, we've made another Volo's Guide to Monsters character. Welcome aboard. If you have any questions or if you want to share any experiences of your own as a role player or as a dungeon master, you're welcome to do so. So the faces, let's put two, three. Let's put a face here. Maybe this makes the uh, the occupiers feel uncomfortable, since there are faces that are built into these rocks. But they're they're too defensible. They're too good to resist otherwise. And this face can even look back, not outwards. This one can look back as if staring into the screaming depths. There we go. You're curious about what Dungeons and Dragons are about. Uh, well, uh, Gyeong, is that how you want me to pronounce your name? Uh, did I do that correctly? Is it Gyeong? Um, Dungeons and Dragons is a storytelling game. It's you and a couple other friends. Pardon. Friends or family members who get together around a table. Maybe you play once a week once a month, <laughs> maybe you play every day, and you tell a story together. You develop these fantastic characters, you take them on adventures, you explore dungeons, you fight monsters, you solve political uh, crisis one after another. And you do all this through the power of your, your creativity and your imagination. It's the ability to tell a tale, to tell a story. There are, you know, <laughs> there are details on top of that. 
but what I told you, Giong, is the core essence of Dungeons & Dragons. It's a way for you to go outside the normal boundaries of a video game. You know, for as much as people like Ocarina of Time, right? Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. There are still boundaries. Even if you <laughs> even if you speed run and you break them, the game still only has uh, certain content that it can load. It can't be creative and it can't be adaptive. Um, it has hard rules of yes or no. With Dungeons and Dragons, you're that adventurer and you can do what you'd like. You can make choices a video game character can't make. And at the end of the session, at the end of the evening, whenever you play, you'll have made memories with your friends that will last a very long time. Uh, so, Gyeong, does that answer your question? Actually, you know what? For this star here, we're going to make this the floating earth moat. And I'm going to indicate that as a different shape and a different... Eh, maybe the same color. I'll use uh, I'll use a different star here. So this one is actually going to rise above. Maybe it'll even like slowly look out across the land. All right, so there's our floating rock with a tower on top of it. Looking out at everything. Perhaps including this this uh, pyramid, by chance, that we uncovered? Uh, Gyeong, yes, it is very entertaining to play. Oh, King, yeah, King provided a very good summary also for you, Gyeong. It is very entertaining to play. Um, it's a good, it's good for thinking, and if you, if you get along very well with your friends and you're not afraid to speak with uh, some sort of an accent or wear hats or masks or, um, you, you know, really explore ideas that you've not explored before. D&D is very, very good for that. You know, have you read a book, like a, a novel or a comic book? Have you seen a movie? And you said, oh, I wish that I could play something, uh, play a character like this. Or you want more content along that genre, right? A fantasy, science fiction, superheroes, that kind of a thing. Dungeons and Dragons, as King over here has indicated gives you a set of tools that you can use to enjoy different types of stories. Upos, hello, good morning to you. We are making a map right now, Upos. Maybe I should make this a different color since this is a vastly different landmark. Same with the... Uh If that's the weird locale, then I guess I'll make these the weird locales also. The trees over here. Wait, am I reading a no majority oppressing drow? 
so the region we're making is a city, like a, or a city state that's split in half. And a, a big half or a big portion of this is controlled by the Shadowheart Empire that we've been developing over the last couple months. Um, the retainers of the city are gnomes, and the minority are half elves of drow lineage because last week we had three half elves come out of the out of the empire down into mesotopia in order to scout or be a spy or to defect from their imperial army and it just this worked out very well well this was the case uh so what they did was they cut off the flow of water and they turned uh, the water here into a series of canals in order to get around. That dried out the land out here, because normally this, this would be more fertile, there'd be farms and forests. Well, after a time, the lake bed dried up, and at the bottom of it was a, a pyramid. The Volos monsters, right? So the, the Furbolgs and the Tritons. Well, the Tritons are kind of held now inside this closed, somewhat closed loop system. Um, but there are Furbolgs and, and maybe other beast tribes that are that are minorities also um, that are living here. Well, they've plundered this, uh, this pyramid at the bottom of a lake. And that is probably what has caused a vampire infestation. You saved Dark Wolf again? <laughs> Kyung says, uh, use your imagination to play with your friends. Yes, it is very interesting. Because the story is what you want the story to be. Even if you're running what's called a module. M-O-D-U-L-E, a module. Um, you can still customize... Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Kyung. You can still customize that to run to your group's interests. You can make it a funny story, um, a, a crime story, like a murder mystery. You can make it horror if you like scary things. You can make it very much like an adventure, you know, like Lord of the Rings kind of a, a style. You take what you want to do and modify it. And you and your friends or, or family tell a giant adventure story together. You know, you want to talk about... Uh, could it be a D&D &D adventure? Sure, we could say that uh, Jason and the Argonauts, you could make that into a D&D &D adventure. Do you like... Um, do you like... Jeez, uh, I was just going over uh, classical Greek mythology, too. Um, oh, the, uh, the Iliad and the Odyssey... I was going to say with Ulysses, but that is the that is the Roman pronunciation for Odysseus. You know, think back to those stories, the twelve labors of Her of Heracles. Um, these are all D and D style adventures. You go out into distant lands, you explore new territory, you find new people, you you might fight creatures that are fantastic and horrible, you know, win treasure. There's a lot you can do within this story that you're building. <clears throat> yeah, Star Wars, Marvel if you wanted. Exactly, King. Uh, so yes, it's apparently by being gnomes, Upos, uh, they constructed this wall around the city, and there's guard towers, and they've turned this into a dam, probably to produce some kind of um, energy, or whether it's an electrical energy, or we want to say it's a giant mill to process crops, or something like that. Um, they have this set up, and uh, the, the city is effectively secured. In fact, I should make some more. I should make some more bridges going across here. There 
we go. Be going to roads or something like that here. And then we can have an extension of the wall going like that, over the water. Almost like an aqueduct. Maybe. Yeah, yeah like we, maybe we could use that, uh, that uh, power for pumping water, too. Oh, wow, that too really hurt you, Dark Wolf. And, uh, and so, Gyeong, what you're seeing in these adventures here... Uh, that you, you might be reading on screen over here. These are little versions of the battles that you can have in Dungeons & Dragons. <laughs> these fights are not that easy if you play D&D, &D, but these adventures are meant to give you a flavor of what the game is and the things that you can do in it. Hey, Technotron, what is up? Have you... Uh... Do you think you have uh, learned the ways of Pokemon? As I saw, you've been trying to learn the, the Pokemon TCG Technotron. All right, so here's our setup. Uh, we have the imperial part, and we got to give that a name. Like the the city, like the city state or the region needs a name of some kind. Where the uh, where the beast men live is called the Floker District. The game's really solid, Technotron. You know, a lot of my players are actually, you know, they would be around our ages. It's not just, a, it's aimed, you know, as an easy game that uh, maybe 10 year olds can get into, maybe even younger. But the majority of the players are older, and there's a, there is still a great amount of strategy to it. Tycho grabs a very large, extremely heavy, marginally deadly hammer, beats the dragon until it drops Dark Wolf. <laughs> Uplus, of course it is. It's been a couple years since I played it, but had a blast. Alright, you know, um, we have now made a map that mirrors the random elements of each part of this city. This is going to act as a support document for the campaign you know, uh, that we're going to be doing on Saturday. All right? We have some very interesting... In fact, I, I might make the, the week's dungeon this uh, this pyramid. That sounds, uh, that sounds like that would be really cool. We have all the other landmarks. We have a culture. We have races that are uh, inhabiting the area and they're doing their thing. You're about to go on the Pro Tour for MTG back in the day. Being made by the same people makes it a shine a little bit better. Well, uh, well, congrats, by the way. If you're, if you're uh, that into uh, MTG that you're going to get ready to do that, that's, that's really cool if you're going to earn some Pro Points, Technotron. But hey, take Pokemon as far as you'd like. There are still, you know, regional, national, uh, world championships. And there's nothing like having a, uh, a card game pr producer pay your airfare and, uh, and lodgings to, uh, I don't know, go to Rome 
and play Pokemon TCG and hand you some oversized check for, I don't know, like $50,000 or something along those lines. I forget exactly what the prizes were. I, I might be thinking more magic, but you get what I'm saying. Hmm. We need to name this city something. You know what? Um. Uh, Gyeong. Gyeong is our newest follower, new to D and D. Has some very good questions. Why don't we name this city in honor of Gyeong? There we go. Congratulations, Gyeong. You have a city named after you. All right, it's time for me to take another break. I'm going to get up and get more water. I think I heard that it was started to rain. Uh, I should take the I should take my garbage out to the curb then also. Um yeah, hey, Gyeong, no problem. Look, the content that we make on this channel, this isn't just my D&D game. This is our world that we make together. And the newest players and the oldest players, like if you want to know here if you spell that backwards, you might find a surprise. But yeah, Gyeong, no problem. I, I I needed a city name, and you know what? We have a newcomer, and I want you to feel welcome. Gyeong is a cool name. I like saying it. <laughs> Gyeong the fourth, the fourth Gyeong city made by the Gyeong dynasty in honor of their firstborn. <laughs> so decrees King Von Ale. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to take a break. I'm going to save these documents for... They, we'll use them later for our dungeon creation session. We'll use them for our campaign creation session also. Um, when I come back... It'll be a little bit of open discussion. Uh, I will need to go to bed early again tonight, so I might wrap things up around 3 a.m. It is currently 2 a.m. my time. Um, so we'll have at least an hour. Look, I, I went till 4 last night, and I said 3. So I'm in no rush to wind things down or to say, come on, go, go, go. Y you all can stay, and I'd love, I'd love to have a uh, more of a conversation with you. And especially, Gyeong, if you have questions... If you have any further questions about Dungeons & Dragons, stay and ask them. This channel is meant for new people like you. Spicy Larry Battles? Hey, nice. Actually, look at you, Spicy Larry. You're up to uh, 10, uh, over 10,000 experience points. That is great. All right. I'll be back in five or ten minutes, okay, everyone? <laughs> 